general it can be like a sort of democratic bootleg writer's workshop, which you like to have. One person, and I'm not quite sure if it will choose it randomly, but they'll like sort of set up an assignment for people to see. And they will bring that assignment. Theme, home, or you know, type of home, or sort of or something. And they'll bring that to the next one. Everyone will sit around and read it and discuss it. And then we'll do the same thing the next one. So, uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, <laughs> What is the question? Well, where are we going to find information about that? That's a good question. So you can probably talk to me or Jay afterwards and get our Instagram, or we also have an email set up for the um, workshop itself. Um, it's called uh, <laughs> Instrument of Surrender, which is like the treaty that the surrendering party has to sign, right? And yeah. the act of, um, uh, yeah, so that's what it's called. And we can give you that email address, and you can reach out to us, ask some questions as well. Um, Instrument yeah. of Surrender yeah. on Instagram. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It has an Instagram too. So we're trying to get it, trying to get it started. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. I recognize very few of you that I will go down. Uh, so, lovely to see you all. Um, I'm here to set all the other readers up for success um, by going first and rather. Um, Kind of diffusely here. So, um, I also wrote a little preamble today, which I normally don't do, but it feels pertinent to sort of tell you all where the hell my head and heart are. The vessel, a la mode, um, instrument of surrender, is uh, very apropos. Uh, I've been feeling lately. Um, I've been living with a bit of a weakness that my nurturing has begun to sprout little fronds of feeling. Little eaves whereby the tears might feel a base for flowers to live and die in. For this reason, I am here to read the poems that for months or years have been relegated not good enough or incomplete. I want to see how the transience of imperfection might work. I say haunt me with the uncouth, ridiculous and ungainly, the overformulaic and taut, the underwhelming and wistfully enigmatic. I still maintain this vision of a collective where the sad is raised to the level of the same being energizing us with the beauty of such vulnerable wounds, a harmonizing voice that is the construct of our failure. That's where I'm at. So. Um, all right, I'll uh, get going here. This first poem is called Unforecasted Snow. The house is large and stationary. Planes sound above it like drawn out crowds clamoring over the fecundity of nothing. Guttural whistles from the white sheet of the sky. There are only a few long hours where the criminal silence is enough to restore the weariest traveler. This is the gap where snow rises. The long bony tirade at rest. The thin shape of an alien self draped formless under covers. The indiscernible is where all potential makes use of demand. Fettered curtains on crimped rods. I have come into this kitchen in a loose shirt. Limp like the days when my appetite lies in the churlish act of peeling fruit. Yet all things are firm. Even water keeps its form when called upon and takes its leave after a storm. Okay. Thanks. Um, I wrote this one for the Maestranza episode. Uh, episode. Sure. Um, zine that never came out. Um, <laughs> uh, it was back when uh, the. Uh, 
uh, Warren Bassett first started. And uh, it's just really having a hard time wrapping my head around what's going on over there. It's the first still in. Um, so yeah, it's called Open Air. <coughs> Ah, this is what we live among. If we can live among each other. The sleepless ones. The vacuum of crisp sound. To open the cellar door. To close it. Where outside the stars all seem to fall as if that telos were ontologically bound. A convoy of abstractions they must call to, like to death generals and planetary actions. Useless to coerce sorrow, to surprise it, as in, to be taken from above. Mm. This is the question that rises. Let us converge. What is the future that merely worships history, faith in a mechanical fate? The consubstantial moon yawns in the arms of the sky's memory, where they once had more than ashen hands with, with which to cover their loved ones and pray for their enemies. The determined little girls, so strong, expected to be so strong. Everyone wants to be a feline until overnight the fox prays and the final pagan look is cast into yelling fur. A quiet purr rests the fervent bones into place at last. Early, in the aftermath, I lug the trash sheet through the lawn into the black plastic sun. Temples of our waste, inevitable overshooting. Yes, desire is holy synthesis. Analog is a synthesis. synthesizer matches the belt of meaning. That cat would come every morning and listen to NPR an opera. Lapping water from the wildflowers we try to keep alive in the vase by the bedside. The green ground makes them. They are the unrelenting army of desire. The symbol of the other side that grows and grows into this one. In the eggshell white of walls, they seem stitched into the dark matter like great moon soaked limbs, a flailing network. Who hampers them hampers for the hidden hold on death, for they are the long tailed crumb seekers of rats we sense but never root out. And so we praise and jointly blame them. It is difficult now to tell if they hide from us or we from them. So absurd is their occult network. They are kindred to the blood then, and coarse in her wake. A clotted spindrift of whispers as she too drifts and spins. Sorry way, have I touched you only in this cursory way? The look in your eyes and the crowds of my anxiety, whole sets of nerves firing in harmony. Your broad intuition caressing what within me lay slumbering, afternoon's linen, wind-blown, rippling overhead, quiet as the minutes after the knock has sounded, before our response resounds. How will we cross that silence, and what power serve in the swept space there? Who will come stumbling into that clearing, that meadow of our demilitarized imagination, the breakable ceramic obnoxious in its fragile and limited utility. When I have touched you and touched myself, who will look your detector in the nerves firing at its eye? Your caress at my name, flagging all marginal impulse and intuition with no great haste towards a whipping fall. Reading Rosa Luxemburg by Maiden. 
The factory floor eats loose threads, trills of sweat, the fricative syllables of foot soles anticipating another late arrival or missed recital. No confession stand at this weekly theater, syndicated to appear total, unput on, voluntary as the only choice there was to be made. Margins the bosses calibrate to these back rooms of housekeeping, where in the off hours, someone needs flour into dough, dirt out of soiled workwear, love small change against the fickle furies of ticker tapes that won't stop ticking, a song on which the turning wheel feeds until the same song turns to still the wheel. <laughs> um, this last one is very new, I wrote this, okay? Um, the warplane is assembled beside the river choked by imperial terraforming, beside a sea renamed in memory of a settler. Flies overhead hundreds of cities on its flight path to the city over which it drops cargo. The city, its cargo empties of living. Roaring overhead, en route its final destination, to which it allocates certain death, enlists neighborhood after neighborhood into the soundscape of certain death, sky pulling briefly, shut all along the flight path. Maps hold geographies of shareholders hanging in the work-life balance, conscripted to the daily labor of generating fuel for this relentless order of operations. Rips a seam in vapor trail, city to field to city threaded in grotesque embroidery of compulsory service to empire, its quiet routine transmitting routine violence. This sky is the same sky, sewn with that common thread. Listen, you can begin to tug at the embroidery, tug until the thread begins to fray. It comes loose just overhead. Here, near this familiar sky, you see fill and empty day.
I'm going to read some very recent stuff uh, against my better judgment. Um, yep. The book I'm working on now is about monstrousness, um, the intersection between monstrousness, blackness, transness, and desire. Um, or broadly, what it's like to desire and be desired uh, in a body that's considered monstrous. Thank you, man, for having me. Yeah, man, thanks for being here. I am in the weather. Every cloud that rolls off the ocean pours my dead on me. The mad, the sick, the brave, the made things who chose the wave over their faceting. In this colonial hell, bell-shaped and bloated, on its own venomous beneficence, what good is good when its price is all of my blood's blood? All of my kin's lineage and finger bones, what good is good when it shares its shape with planet-rending calamity? My dead, you are in the rain and the fog, and your mist stings my eyes. I cannibalize you as water on my scaly skin. You loan me the requisite loam and bristle to bury this world within itself. I wear you as dripping carapace, you laureates of the sea's undersong. You feed me an unnameable droning. I am a low thing, soulless, black storehouse of lack, native only to death. Who am I to deny affection from any hungering source, from any consumptive and savoring hand? Alone at night I marry the earth and recall the ascent into your mountainous company. I would splinter the world reflexively for one moment of a precipitous handhold off the smallest of your features. One cragged, curled finger cut open by your rocky quartz. A spray of color, a breath of tortured delight. The eruptive surprise of your tectonics is worth any severing, any inevitable betrothal to plummet. Would the moon even want me? Wrist deep in dirt, the earth lusts for me but cannot know my name, my grandmother's name great-grandmother's name, blood interrupted with a long, hollowing echo. Wrist deep in the sea, the salt calls on my bones, osseous mass mapped in me, but what of the flesh? This thin heart slivered by the terror I inflict, my lips thick enough to dolly wall. Where does my flesh belong aside from the pyre? Wrist deep in you, my hands in your chest to restart your snarl, to beg for a place in your winding river to twist my fingers into any water where I am wanted. Omen of the cleft heart, a pitted sunken vault of moss and silt, my back arched around the spear as lesson. Wood smoke striated with burning bone. I predate, local to every basin, a tremendous lake of fear pour in me all trembling. Fish along my shores with any caliber of bullet, a myth cannot be killed, but she can be cut drained into holy cups to show the righteous the beast can be bled. Even in death, I do not die. The warning does not end. The hell alongside us. We deem in the road as reparation, drain the white fat from rib cages for bullion cubes. Two harpy things, winged talons lacerating the cliff into a threat to scaffold the terror of our weighted absence, how we could arrive with any shift in the wind to pinion the crittered heart of a spirit-sick, earth-swallowing devil. Every hint of us a lagoon of menace, and we drink from each other, cackling at how we love what kills us. The more dangerous the world, the more dangerous its beasts. The more lovely the world, the more hideous, the more hideous I must be. The kinder the world, the more craven I must be. 
The calmer the world, the, most, the more ravenous I must be. The richer the world, the more bereft I must be. The more textured the world, the more binary I must be. The more defined the world, the more ribboned I must be. The sweeter the world, the more hollow boned I must be. The more vibrant the world, the more collagenous I must be. The wider the wound, the greener the grass. The larger the pyramid, the cleaner the bone. Thank you. It is, yeah. Sweet. Is it? Should I turn it off? Turn it back on? Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah.
the space you inhabit, or the mind you say you do. The aisles of grain are alpine hot and shoulders and mother's voice. You and is eating tomorrow. If tomorrow is eating, then where are you? Structurally in the concept of time. If there is no beginning, you are not, but the thin, thin skin of a hunted whale. Pouring over in your crates or eels, the teeth, the fibrous sun, the eyes and glass, flare, brooding, fibrous, wave after tired wave, terrible whiteness. Choose! 